Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be five tips for the RHCSA exam, as well as be an introduction to some of the other videos in this playlist that are practice sessions for the RHCSA exam. Before I dive in, I want to remind you, if you enjoy the content of this and any other video I made, make sure that you uh, click like on the video. Also, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell when you do, so you can be aware when new content comes available. So the RHCSA exam, or the Red Hat Certified System Administrator exam, um, has, has, has been my primary um, IT education focus for the last um, year, and, and really the, the last six months um, of the last year as far as more in, intense study. I did uh, pass my RHCSA exam, so yay me. Um, and what I'm hoping to do with this video is give some um, pointers based on my own experience with preparing for the exam and, and the exam itself to hopefully help you in your own uh, journey toward this, this particular certification. So um, a couple of these might sound obvious, but, but I, I have some, some method to the madness. So without further ado, the first tip that I have of my five is know the material. And you might be thinking, well, that's kind of obvious. We need to know what, you know, know all, all the objectives and such on the exam. But what I'd like to do is um, is describe my journey to, to learning the material for the exam. And, you know, when, when I started this, I only had kind of a cursory knowledge of Linux. I I'd started using it as my daily driver on, on, on my laptop and such. And there, there were a couple of Linux VMs where, where I worked. I think one was like a Postfix VM that was being an SMTP relay. And so I, I touched a couple of things, but, you know, I, I hadn't dealt with actual Red Hat Linux or, or anything like that. So the path that I took was um, a combination of using Linux Academy. And they have uh, two RHCSA courses with that, which at, at, at the time of this, uh, this video that I'm making, they mainly focus on uh, the rail seven version. There's one of the courses, which is actually the shorter of the two that have some, um, some uh, modules for rail eight, the, the, and I, I don't necessarily bemoan them for not having like an official rail eight course at the time that I was doing my study, because a lot of the, the concepts really are, are, are repeated from the rail seven exam to rail eight. So I um, did, did those, two courses, which, which took the, the better part of a year. Now there's not, you know, the, the actual time material for, for, for the course would not be a, a year's worth of material, but mind you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a full-time professional of which life got in the way several times. And really in, in the last six months, I kind of sat down and said, look, I'm, I'm tired of messing around with the material. I want to learn it, get my cert and move on to, to, to the next thing. So that, that was, that was kind of my primary education. The other thing I did was when I started my final review, which was about a month or so um, be, before I took the exam, I used the, I think it's Sander Van Vocht is, is, is how you say his name, but he has a book that is a RHCSA prep book. And if you, if you Google it, you're going to find that that's just kind of like one of the de facto standard books and such. And I use that as a part of my, my, my final prep. And I did that mainly because you know, the book is is done in a way to where you have some do you know this already questions in the chapter. So I would do that. And if I could answer all of those, I would kind of skim over the chapter. If, if I, there were a couple that I couldn't answer immediately, I, I would spend spend some more more time with with that chapter. And so I, I, I went through that as a part of my final review. And then the other thing that I did was actually look at the exam objectives themselves from Red Hat and go through each objective and see if I, I, I feel confident with it. And that, that that's where the, the other videos in this playlist come in. Those practice sessions aren't like me giving a training course on RHCSA because I was obviously learning the material at the time, but rather for me, it was a chance to, to go over those individual exam objectives and try to explain them and try to make up some, some examples really as a, as a, a, a self-test for, do, do I feel like I, I really know the material? And there were, there were some videos that I, I, I did pretty well in, if I say so myself, I, I know the stuff, uh, you know, rather handedly there are other videos where you, you can tell I, I struggle with with um, some of the concepts and those between you know making the video and then taking the exam I, I took some extra time to to brush up on on, on the on the the points the um the overall 
idea though is you, you really need to know the material inside and out. And one thing that I think will, will help with that leads actually in, 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 into my second point, which is to practice actual examples of the objectives. Because if you think about it, the whole point of this CERT exam and, and, and really any other IT CERT is to learn skills that you're going to be using in your job in IT, whether that's Linux system administrator or a network administrator or network engineer if you're doing the CCNA stuff or the, the Cisco stuff or whether that's doing um, bench work with hardware and such, which is what, what you get with the the a plus exam and things that it's, it's all designed to get you skills to, to be able to either function in your job better or help you get that first job to start getting the experience. And so something I encourage you to do as you go through the uh, objectives is to do labs. I mean, you know, Linux Academy and the, the Sander Van Vook book that, that I used all had labs in them. And I'm sure whatever education resource you're using, even if it's the official like training from Red Hat themselves, you, you will have labs to do. And some of the labs might, might be kind of easy. Some might be kind of difficult. But the point is you need to do them and you need to do them over and over again. And the goal of that is not to memorize what's on the labs, but it's to become familiar with the, the concepts that you're, you're, you're working with perfect example for me was uh, working with Stratus and video in my training. I had had, I had zero experience with video or Stratus. And if you don't know what video and Stratus are and you're preparing for the RHCSA, here's your call to action. Go look them up. Um, because remember, if it's on the uh, 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 objective list, it's it, it, it's fair game for the exam. But anyway, those two things I, I had zero experience with. And so the labs that, that I did with that, a lot of times I would, I'd, I'd have my, my VM and then I would, um, I would attach an extra, um, block storage device to, to, to the VM, install Linux, get it patched up to current, then take a snapshot of that VM. So that way I have kind of like a pristine VM to always be going back to. And I would practice making an, um, a Stratus pool and a file system. And I would do it again and again and again. And not just to try to memorize kind of the basis of how to do it, but to be familiar with it. I, I would make mistakes. I would also intentionally try to break some stuff and see, see what that looked like. And one of the advantages of, of doing that kind of is twofold. Let's say you have some objective on the exam where the objective is not necessarily to configure something, but it's we have something that's broke. You need to figure out how to fix it. Well, if you're familiar with, with problems that, that, that you'll see from, from doing labs over and over again, you, you'll, be, you'll be a little less stressed about it on the exam. Also, kind of like anything, you know, in, in, in your, your day-to-day work in IT, you're not going to, um, to know everything at the, the, the tip of your tongue all the time. I mean, I, I, I currently work as a, a, a system administrator in the Windows world, and I mean, I'm, I'm pretty well versed with PowerShell and all of our systems and such that we have, but I don't know everything. I mean, there, there's things I do all the time that, that I can... I, I know well, but from doing all those things, if I need to look up some obscure PowerShell commandlet or some obscure um, parameter of a PowerShell commandlet that I might use more often, then I, I have the base knowledge to be able to figure that out. And so how, how this applies to the exam is, you know, if you have that good foundational knowledge of all the objectives, if something comes up on the exam that, that, that you're not sure about, you can go to the man pages or info pages or whatever um, you, you would like that actually is available to you, which are going to be man and info pages. You unfortunately cannot consult Dr. Google on the exam, but you have that base knowledge enough to know, you know, I'm, I, I don't remember exactly how this thing is, but I know this is what it should be doing. Let me check out the man page and there's a parameter that you need, or you, you know what you're wanting a command to do. You know, there's a parameter for it and, 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 and knowing about that, Make, make, makes life a little bit easier for you to look it up for your exam. You're not going to be able to get that knowledge base just by trying to memorize commands and just reading or, or, or watching videos. In my opinion, you're going to get that through doing the things. Even if, if, if the things are kind of, well, it seem like trivial tasks and such, but it's just, it's getting that experience. So my um, next three points are about the exam itself. 
and the first is read all of the objectives before you start working on the exam. Now, I can't give you details about the exam. A, I, I, I wouldn't want to just because it, it kind of cheapens the, 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 the work that you would be doing for, for the exam. And B, I'm under NDA anyway with, with Red Hat. If you take the exam, you have to you know, sign your agreement. Or for me, I did the remote exam, so I didn't like do the little electronic signature for it, saying that you're not going to release any of the knowledge of the of exam uh, objectives and such. And they do that to, to keep the integrity of the exam. So the things I'm going to tell you are real general, but it's, it's, I, I think it's, it's uh, timely stuff to know, but doesn't break the security of, of the exam. So again, you want to read all, all of the objectives before you start working. And the reason why you want to do that, honestly, for any exam, if you, unless it's an exam where, you know, you can't go back to previous questions, I would, I would do that anyway. You know, let's say you, I think I had what, two and a half hours for the RHCSA, take the first few minutes and read everything. And the reason you want to do that, since this is a task-based exam and you're going to have, you know, here's your list of objectives, you know, go do them. You're, you will identify objectives that might be a little bit easier for you to do or objectives that aren't necessarily difficult, but might be more time consuming. And perhaps it makes sense to knock out some of the, the low hanging fruit, so to speak first, and then, you know, get that out of the way. So you have a, a, a bulk of your time to work on some of the more complex objectives. You're not going to know that if you just start objective one and just go. So, so take, even though it might seem odd, take that couple of minutes to just read over everything and, and know what, what you're going to have to do for the exam. That, that goes in, 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 into the, the next point. So tip number four is manage your time. And that, that, that managing your time goes, or I'd say it, 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 it relates in two ways. One is obvious, you know, don't, don't run out of your time. But at the same time, you, you have to look at, all right, here's the things I need to do. How long will it take me? How long do I think it will take me to do them? When, 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 when should I do them? And where that can come into play is, let's say you're working on a piece of the exam. You might be able to hear the, the loud car that's outside my apartment. Anyway, um, you, uh, you're, you're, you're working on an objective and there's just, you know, you're like on the tip of your tongue. I'm almost done with it. There's one thing that, that is just not working or, or I can't think of it. Rather than continuing to spin your wheels about something, and th this actually happened to me on, on my exam, there was some objective, I thought I had stuff configured right, things weren't working, and so I spent a few a few more minutes digging at it, and then I decided to leave it and go to another objective, and um, luckily what, what I was working on like didn't impact the other objectives, it was kind of a, a little unique thing, so I went on, on to some some other objectives, got those out of the way, and came back to the one I was stuck on. And within uh, just a couple of minutes, I, I figured out what was wrong. And it, 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 it's, it's kind of like at work, you know, if you get stuck on a problem, sometimes it helps to walk away from it for a bit. You kind of clear your head, you come back and you're giving it some fresh eyes and you can see what's going on. Well, you don't necessarily have that luxury in the exam because you, you, A, you, you or I'm not, I'm not sure if I could leave the area or not. I, I, I don't think I could. wasn't planning on it anyway. But in the exam, you know, the way you can do that is maybe go on to another objective and then come back and, you know, perhaps the problem is, is right in front of you and you can, or rather the solution is right in front of you and you can identify it. You can't do that if you don't have a good concept of, of time and you'll, you'll have the little uh, timer visible to you. And so you, you can make that the, the, the budget for that. And the, the last tip I have, number five is related to the, the, the previous two, and that is verify and reboot for your configurations. As you will learn, either you're just now hearing it from me, or you've read the exam objectives, or you've been through some courses, something that's like beaten into you is everything has to survive a reboot. So whatever configuration you make, you know, whether it's enabling a service or setting network settings on and on and on, it has to, to, to persist through, through a reboot. So you, and this again goes back to your time management is you need to give yourself time to reboot the thing that you're working on to verify that your configurations work. 
Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this and, 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 and being smart about it and not necessarily having to wait on the reboot. An example of that, let's say that there was an objective where you needed to, to mount a file system somewhere. Well, wait, what I would do if I was in that situation, I would verify my configuration using mount A because that'll read at CFS tab and mount anything that's there. And if, and if there's a problem with that, then you know you, you can fix it right there. You don't have to wait for the, the machine that you're working on to, to finish its reboot. But even then, if you manage your time well, in my opinion, you should have time to at least do one, one reboot prior to f- finishing your exam. And you definitely want to do that just to make sure things are, 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 are working the, the way that, that, that they should. And that, that also goes into just verifying the, the configuration rather than just waiting on that reboot. What I did, um, was each, each thing that, that, that I configured, I tried to just kind of have a mental note of verify it and move on. So let's say that again, going back to that example of, of, of having to mount a file system, you know, my, my, my method of verifying that, uh, would have been mount dash a, but each thing you do, you, you, you want to verify and then at, at the end uh, leave, leave time to reboot. So to, to uh, recap my five main, five main tips, and they're probably kind of obvious, but hopefully the explanation I gave you for them um, makes sense and, and will help you, is knowing the material. If it's on the objective list, it's fair game. Practice using actual examples, whether that, that's you know working from labs, from... Uh, from a book or or making up your own scenarios. And then during the exam, read the objectives first before you start working. Be knowledgeable about your time, manage your time well, and don't forget to verify configurations and reboot. So that way, you know, you, you're, you're confident that, that the exam is going to go well for you. And on that note, if you are on your journey toward the RACSA, I wish you the, the uh, best of luck. Hopefully my practice session videos in this playlist will be helpful for you. Remember, they're not, uh, 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 especially some of them that I don't, I don't do as well on, aren't designed to be authoritative information, but rather it is uh, perhaps I might talk about something in a way you haven't considered before and it might uh, help you um, absorb the information better. Regardless, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.